Okay. There okay. we go. Patty, really quick, maybe like twice during the class, just mention the people to put yep. their email in so that I can at the end of the class, just shoot it off to you. I can't do it without you, Glenn. You're wonderful. Okay. Now we're going to approach hosting an open house from your point of view. And for most of you, you don't have a listing yet. So you will be hosting an open house for another agent. Selection of the open house at this point is, oh my God, of course I'll do your open house as opposed to, well, I want to concentrate in my neighborhood. I want to concentrate in my town. At this point, the way our market is, if you are given an opportunity to do an open house, grab it. Uh, sometimes you don't have the chance to do the prep uh, that I'm going to talk about this evening, uh, but you do the best you can. All right. 50% of the success of an open house is the prep and probably 40% is the follow-up. Okay. So I'm going to start. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Preparation. Educate the seller. Now, that's the job of the listing agent, um, whoever that may be. Uh, but the house needs to be sparkling and uncluttered. Uh, let the sellers know the hours the house will be open and that they need not be present. Got some grammatical errors there. The buyers need to think of the home as theirs, not the sellers. That's why we really prefer when we show a home uh, or at an open house that the sellers not be there. Also, buyers are less likely to be forthcoming with us if they think the sellers can hear their criticisms. Okay, who did what? All right, that was bizarre. Okay. Um, all right, um, all lights need to be on. I want you to think of, of course, it's been a while. Last time you walked into a high-end store like Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom's, what was the sensory impression? Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, just clean, uh, professional, organized, tidy. Okay, what were the lights like? What are the lights like when you walk into Neiman? It's kind of like a warm, beigey, yellowish. Yeah, but it's bright. You're not walking into a dark store. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah, indeed, they may have pink lights. Um, and there's music playing, right? Soft music. And usually you walk into the uh, cosmetic department or the perfume department, <laughs> right? So you have all of these sensations. It smells good. It's clean. It's organized. It's light. It's bright. Well, that's what you're going to mimic doing an open house. So all lights need to be on. Their need. If there is a music system, have on soft music. The blinds are up. If it's cold, ask the owner if they would start the fireplace. That's provided it's gas. Okay. And then obviously you would ask, do you want me to turn it off or do you, are you coming back or how do, how do you want to handle this? Um, the pets should be removed and hide or at least clean up like litter boxes. If it's summer, the lawn should be mowed, bushes trimmed, and in the winter, all walks clear and ice free. In the fall, make sure the leaves are cleared. Again, most of this falls the responsibility of the listing agent. Number six, extremely important. Have the seller hide their jewelry, cameras, money, medications, guns, and any valuables, and not in the top drawer. That's the first place anybody's going to look. Sometimes when people have malicious ideas, they'll separate knowing there's only one of you. And, okay. Um, as a safety feature, by the way, while I'm thinking of it, and I think I may speak, talk about it later, you should always, because you don't know these people, be between the customer and the door. And don't turn your back on them. Physically, do not turn your back on them. Just a safety thing. I don't mean to get you nervous, but I think it's always, an ounce, you know, we've always been told an ounce of prevention. Um, and consider staging at least one, uh, one room, preferably the dining room table, either indoors or out, 
and create a festive atmosphere. So your prep, all right? So the seller's got the house looking pretty good. You're gonna make sure that you understand every facet of the house. If you have never seen the house, ask to go there with the listing agent to learn. Know when the updates were completed. Is it septic or sewer, which quite frankly is in the MLS? Is it well or public water? Are there any easements? Take notes, get a copy of the seller disclosure and study it. Now that should be on the MLS under the document section. Preview other homes for sale in the neighborhood. Now, if you're not able to do it because of the COVID environment, at least do it online. Be knowledgeable, knowledgeable about the other homes on the market. Chances are good that at least one visitor will ask you about another house. Uh, wouldn't it make you look good if you could say you'd seen it, okay? Put the house on any website that you can. Make sure the listing agent puts it on the MLS. You can't do that. The listing agent has to do that. But you certainly can Facebook it. You can blog about it. And you can make sure there's an open house sign writer on the for sale sign. Have you all seen that? When you go by and it says open Sunday, one to four. And get that sign writer on, I prefer by Wednesday. Um, and make sure your database knows that you're going to be doing an open house, even if it's not a match for them, even if they're not looking. Um, but it's a nice way to re-image yourself. Hey, I'm doing an open house, this great house in Oradell. Uh, please come see me, blah, blah, blah. Do the price, eight forty nine nine. You know, three bedrooms, three baths. Okay. So just shout it from the rooftops that you're doing an open house. Um, find out if the town will allow you to use directional signs and if there are any rules about where they can be placed. Um, center islands are off limits. Uh, a, a nice, uh, let me just read about the next one. If you are going to be putting directional signs on someone's property, ask the owner's permission to do so. If they are not home, leave a note card because you've got a supply in your car saying, sorry, I missed you. I'm doing an open house at 123 Main Street from one to four. Please come see me. I hope you don't mind. I took the liberty to put the directional sign on your property. I will pick it up as soon after the open house as possible. Now, do you think that's done a lot? Anybody there? <laughs> yeah, I would think so. No, it's not done. <laughs> All right, but you're going to do it because, again, that's an advertisement for you. Many people feel that the last five or six feet of the property belongs to the town and that they don't need to ask permission of the homeowner. But the homeowner mows that lawn, fertilizes that lawn, pays to get it taken care of. So guess what? They want the courtesy of asking. So knock on their door and ask them, say, come and see me. Can I use, you know, put my directional sign? I have to say, I don't know of anybody who would say no. Um, okay, learn about the town and the schools. Uh, where are the schools um, and how many, the shopping, the New York commute and recent sales in the neighborhood. Uh, print an attractive flyer with your information on it. You can do a customer copy of the MLS printout. Remember the person visiting you may be searching for a realtor to list their home. There's no such thing as a nosy neighbor, by the way. You're going to hear that. And I want you to discard that thought. If someone's taking time on a Sunday to come and look at an open house, they have some sort of an agenda. It might be a year two years down the road, but you hope to be building a pipeline anyway. Okay, um, make a guest registry or you can use something like Open House Pro and I understand command has a sign-in sheet. Okay, which would then put the people in your contacts, which is fabulous. Um, make sure you find out if there are other homes having an open house in the immediate area and what their prices are even if they're competitors. And consider preparing a list for the people who come to your open house and say, by the way, if you love the neighborhood, here are three other homes that are also open today. 
Now you're probably thinking, why would I send customers to a competitor's open house? Well, because it's service and it's coming from contribution. And quite frankly, they'll be impressed. Um, all right, you, you want to invite the neighborhood. So how are you going to do it? You can door knock a minimum of 25 homes within 72 hours of the open house. Um, try to invite as many people as you can. If you are sending postcards, if you're mailing invites, be sure they arrive Friday or Saturday. Nothing that screams poor organization for an open house invite to arrive on Monday. Okay, uh, be on time. On time means that you are at the house, the house is ready, the signs are out, your display is, um, all, all the stuff is displayed. And um, hang on, it jumped. And you're ready to go. Okay. And you're ready to go by 15 minutes. I missed a client because they were waiting. They were excited. I got there just at one o'clock. They had been there for like 10 minutes. Doesn't make a good impression. So you want, um, you want to be ready a good 15 minutes before it starts. And be ready to give out the basic information about the house without having to look at the listing sheet. Some of the stuff, yeah, you might not know the taxes offhand um, and you want to be pretty accurate with lot size, but you should have a pretty good idea. Be prepared that the open house may run over. So don't make an appointment at four o'clock or 4.30. An idea is you may want to hold a special open house for the neighbors from 12 to 1. Now, that's a long day for you, and I get it. But, all right. Also, as our days get longer, it's now 6.15. It's still light. Come the longer days, you could hold open houses weekday evenings. It's kind of time that we don't use for anything, so why not make it productive and hold an open house uh, during the summer evening times. Questions so far, you want me to keep going? Everybody, if you would please send Glenn or actually put it in the chat, um, your email address and I will, um, Glenn will be great and give me all your emails and then I will email you this handout. I have a question about schools. What's a good source to get information on schools? Um, that's a good question. Um, first of all, the town websites frequently have um, an education tab, and that will be a good place to start. Um, I know you're pop probably thinking about those comparisons that come out. Um, and they're kind of fun to say, oh my God, the town I live in, the school's in the top 10. Uh, but always ask the questions, top 10 to what? Is it student teacher ratio? Is it um, SAT scores? Is it percentage of students going to Ivy League schools? But start with the town, you know, the town website is, is just so full of good stuff that before you do an open house, you should spend some time there and you can print stuff out you want to have some nice stuff. I, I live in Mawa. You go to the Mawa website and it talks about all the parks and that's a nice, you know, and the hiking trails and all of that. Um, and print out stuff on the schools. Okay. Um, all right. You have a few goals when you do an open house. Obviously getting that house sold is number one. Even if it's not your listing, that's you're exposing that house. Now, I'm going to take a minute to digress to um, one of the reasons um, a listing agent will want to do an open house if the house is on a street that takes some traffic. Notice I didn't say busy. Busy is a word loaded with judgment. Picture me saying to you, Veronica, I'm going to show you this house. It's got everything you want, but it's on a busy street. What have I just done? Killed the listing. Exactly. All right. So we don't use the word busy. 
We say it's on a street that takes some traffic. And I want you to learn to isolate the objection because every buyer will say to you, I don't want a busy street. Every buyer, trust me. And many realtors just take that down. Okay, no busy street. How many bedrooms do you want? Oh, okay, how many baths? The true salesperson will turn to that buyer and say, well, tell me what about a street that takes some traffic concerns you? And then you listen to the concerns. Are there any other concerns? Try to isolate if there's more than one. Are there any others? Then go to solving the objections if you can. Sometimes you can't. Um, as you drive around, keep your eyes on the road, but look around you for those houses that are on streets that take some traffic. How have they handled the concerns? Are Well, what do you think the concerns are? Noise. Noise. Okay, so how do you think houses, look around you when you, you're on a street that takes some traffic. What have they done? Landscaping, maybe they have a berm, right? I yeah. also want you to think about homes and the, the layout of the rooms. Many of the rooms they live in day to day are in the back. And it's the rooms in front where they're entertaining. The living room, the dining room. When they're making their noise, they're making more noise than the street. So think about that. Think about also replacing windows is not a huge deal on some of these houses. Yes, it's an expense, but you wouldn't have to be replacing all the windows, just the windows that are concerned to the seller. So landscaping, putting a berm. How far back is the house set? Sometimes these homes are set back. What are some other concerns? Safety for little children. Safety for little children. Thank you. Sure. So what are some of the solutions? A fence. A fence. Fence. <laughs> fence. Sometimes even just doing the driveway. Also, is there a sidewalk? Are they maybe one house away from a neighborhood where the little children can go ride their bikes? Okay. What else? Parking, people say, you know what? I entertain all the time. I, you know, I need people to be able to park on the street. Well, let me ask you, how many times a year do you entertain? Oh, probably five times. Okay. And then say, well, how many people do you have? Oh, probably five couples. So you're talking five cars, maybe four or five times a year. So how do you overcome that? Look to see where there's parking. Are they one house away from a neighborhood? Do they have a long driveway? Do they have a circular driveway? So I'm trying to get you to not just be an order taker, but to help drill down to the details um, to help you make a sale that maybe you wouldn't if you didn't ask the questions. And again, coming back to holding an open house on a um, house that is on a street that takes some traffic, helps market the home directly to the buyer. Patty, go potty. Okay, could someone put themselves on mute, please? Because uh, the rest of us, okay, put yourself on mute, please. So um, you, we market directly to the buyer because quite frankly, it's realtors who don't show homes that make that decision for their buyer. I'm not gonna show you a, a house on a, a busy street. I'm not gonna do that. Why? Why? It's not your decision to make. So anyway, so doing an open house on a street, on a house uh, that's on a street that takes some traffic is one way to uh, market directly to a buyer. Um, okay, so you wanna get the house sold. You wanna meet potential buyers and sellers and impress them enough for them to call you and put yourself in the path of opportunity. Your goal is to get into a relationship with the guests, unless they're with a realtor. Um, you want to establish, establish yourself as a local expert. It's an inexpensive way to prospect and impress the sellers that you're doing everything possible. That would be if you're the listing agent. So what do you do? What do you bring with you? Directional signs and plan to get those ahead of time. Don't wait till Friday. 
Um, if you want my advice, I'd say order a few yourself. Don't depend on the market center. You should have some open house directional signs uh, that you've purchased. Maybe a couple of you could go together. So you each uh, get two. Have the copies of your flyer or a brochure if you've printed information off the town website. Customer copies of the MLS with your information on it. And maybe little things to give out, like some agents will um, have give out pens. And um, if you're using a paper guest registry, have multiple pens because people don't want to use someone the pen someone else has used. So all the more reason to get personalized pens. Uh, also, people like to have privacy. So if you're going to use a paper guest register, have it one guest per page. Have your business cards, mortgage information. In your market center in the conference room, there should be some mortgage information. Take a flyer, run copies. You need to have the consumer information statement, consent to dual agency, and the COVID form. Um, personal brochures, if you have them, any giveaways. Offer the KW app. Um, you can have cards offering a free market analysis of their home. A uh, bottle of water, snacks, but do not eat um, or drink in front of people and do not take any of the seller's food or drink. That would be for you. It can be a long day. Uh, so you want to bring your um, some water and some snacks. Uh, a folding chair, especially if the house is vacant. Note cards, so you can start writing your thank you for coming to my open house. Uh, and have available, are you ready for this? In your In your car, a broom flashlight, scissors, a shovel like in snow shovel, paper towels, Windex, disinfecting wipes and or cleaners, tape measure, large towel, garbage bags and sanitizer. Is there anything there that you say, why would I need that? No. Okay. That don't make sense. <laughs> Because what if the house is like dirty? You know, what if they didn't actually clean up? So you have to quick clean it before you show the house. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, um, someone called me, someone in the coaching group, she had done an open house and she said, thank you for telling me to bring sanitizer. She said the bathroom was disgusting. Now, maybe I should put rubber gloves down here too. <laughs> and Patty, okay. one, someone said one time, make sure the toilet's flush. Oh God. And the lid down. And the lid down. Oh my God. Oh. It's amazing. It is amazing. I have shown homes um, and where we've stepped over a dirty diaper. I mean, Oof. okay. And don't forget, forget safety. You stand closer to the exit and do not turn your back on the prospect. When a car pulls up, greet people warmly and with a smile, but don't pounce on them. Introduce yourself, your name, and your company, and tell them you're there to answer any of their questions they may have. I have to tell you, when I watch HGTV, how many of you watch HGTV? Yeah, yeah, guilty, guilty. <laughs> okay, I cringe. The realtor in me cringes when I watch them, those realtors say, okay, you go on, look, I'll meet you out back. I'm like, How can you overcome objections if you're not with them? You take them through the home, number one, for security reasons, but then you can ask them questions, get to know them, build rapport, get into relationship with them, find out what they don't like and see if it's something you can overcome. Without sounding like you're interrogating them, ask them questions a little at a time. What brought you here? Was it the sign, ad, newspaper? Are you familiar with this area? This is why you, you learn about the neighborhood and the town. So you can talk about it and get them excited. At the end, ask them if they like the home, what were the pluses and the minuses? If they say they don't like the home, then ask, what does your ideal home look like? Uh, let them describe. If you know of another home that might suit them, bring it up. This is why you previewed other homes um, prior to the open house and ask them if they would like, uh, if you would like them to take, if they would like you to take them there. Um, 
obviously you don't leave the open house. You make an appointment outside of the open house. Um, all right, if you can't think of another home, asking them if they would like you to send them homes that would be suitable for their needs, make sure you have their email. Always thank people for coming and ask if there are any questions, even if they are rude, be nice to them. Uh, make sure that they sign in so you have a record for the seller and the listing agent, also for contract tracing. If someone tries to resist signing in, explain that it's the seller's request. By the way, I'm not sure someplace there should have been here where um, in prep, you talk, find out about the uh, recent sales in the neighborhood, you should do a mini CMA, what's active, what's under contract and what has sold. I would go back in the last year um, because it's funny, people will come to the open house and they'll say, what did that house up the street sell for? And at least if you can say, well, you know what? I have uh, everything here printed out, bring it with you and say, you know what, maybe that sold more than a year ago. Tell you what, I'll get back to you. Make sure I have your email or your cell phone and I'll get that information for you. Okay, make sense? Okay, uh, follow up, make sure that the house is properly locked up. Um, double check every door. Again, sometimes people will separate and, in, and even honestly, one will go downstairs, one will go upstairs, or someone opens the back door and you don't realize it. So you want to make sure that the house looks the same as when you arrived. If the blinds, if you open the blinds, close them. Uh, if you were told to either leave all the lights on or turn them off, you do that. Just make sure the doors are locked. Immediately, notice that's in bold, call, and text the listing agent with a report of how many people attended, which realtors sent clients, um, and which realtors showed the property. The listing agents need to call their sellers right away. Can you imagine you're the seller and you've just been kicked out of your house for maybe three to four hours? Don't you think you're kind of anxious to know what went on? So of course, you have to reach out to that listing agent immediately who's waiting for your call. And, um, so that the listing agent can let the seller know if it's not your listing, if it's your listing, obviously you take care of that. Um, if the sellers come home before you leave and it's not your listing, it's not your place to give any information other than to say, you know, we had a good turnout. I'll give more details to the listing agent. If the seller starts to question you, what do you think about the price? Your answer is, you know what? You need to ask your listing agent about that. It literally is not your job and can create problems. So just say, you know what? You really need to refer to Veronica will help you with that. All right. Follow up with any client who did not have a realtor. Follow with a thank you note, a phone call or an email. Uh, and it should go out within 24 hours. You don't wait till Wednesday to do your open house follow up. You do it on Monday or Sunday night. Um, and if you have any emails for the clients, put them on a smart plan in, in um, command. They have eight by eight by, for buyers, so whichever. Here's some script ideas. Before the open house, here, if you want a door knock. Um, so I'll let you go through these. Uh, I think it's, you know, you door knock and you say, you know, I'm, I'm at your door because the homeowners, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, have asked me to invite you to the open house on their home at 123 Main Street uh, tomorrow from one to four. Um, and by the way, if when I find a buyer, I'd like to be able to share with them what people like about the neighborhood. May I ask you what it is that you like most about the neighborhood? Don't you think that's really kind of a nice call? Yeah, or a nice, um, not a call, nice conversation. And if you were to move, where would you go next and when might that be? Uh, do you need to sell in order to buy? If yes, are you local? Uh, I have a lot of buyers I'm looking for. Could I stop by and see if you're home? That's obviously out of place. Could I stop by and see, oh, this is if people coming to the open house. See your home, would it be appropriate for any of them? So, and during the house, if they, during the open house, if they say the home is not for them, what does your dream house look like? I think we went through that already. Show them neighborhood snaps in a KW app. And if they say they're working with an agent, 
take their names and email plus the realtor's name and email and send to the listing agent. Okay. Okay. Do you have questions? Um, what about your own personal belongings? Do you leave them in the car? Um, I would say do not leave anything out on the counter. Um, as far as a per bring in what you think you're going to need, but yeah, probably in the trunk of your car locked up. Okay. Yeah. Obviously you're going to have your cell phone. Mm -hmm. Um, you're going to have some other stuff that may be of value. Just keep it on you. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Good question, Liz. Thank you. Okay. What do you think? Wow. We did that in a half an hour. Oh my gosh, boy, I, I talk too fast. I have to change some things on here. Howdy, I'll ask a question since we have 30 more minutes. Yeah, go um, ahead. Are there any alternatives to putting a stake in the front yard and putting a for sale sign? Well, it's, hopefully it's already there. Right. Most of the time, this is not your listing, especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. And sometimes the sign does have the listing agent's rider on it. That's fine. Um, again, refer to the towns, but most of the people, and maybe you're referring to this, Daniel, where you put a directional sign on the property. Now, if you don't have enough directional signs, maybe you put some balloons on the for sale sign and make sure the sign writer is there that says open Sunday. Make it look like it's open. Right, thanks. Okay. How many of you have done open houses? I just okay. go to a lot of open houses. <laughs> I go but you to haven't, okay, you haven't, haven't hosted, hosted one. one myself, but I go to them a lot. Daniel, do you, did you host or you're just visiting? I was invited to host with two other agents just to get okay. a feel for it. Good. Um, we had a, yeah, there was cat poop, like, you know, Ugh. right at the entrance way, which, you know, we didn't really, weren't prepared for, I guess. Yep. I just kind of showed up with my first time doing it, obviously. So I wasn't really, um, I wasn't. It's eye really opening. Well. It's eye opening now. Yeah, yeah, and and also I was just curious, like how you would not not get excited, but um, the, you know, the house it was a fixer upper, so um, it was hard to get, you know, hey, great space, you know, <laughs> it was great neighborhood. To, talk was, about it, the it, town. It yeah, was, that's when you. Yeah. That, that's it, when you talk was. about the town and the neighborhood and uh, the potential. You, potential, yep. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that happens, but that's why you get there early. That's why you preview it ahead of time. So you know what you're getting into. Um, and again, go back to that uh, Neiman Marcus experience. You want it to smell good. You want it light and bright. You want maybe nice music. However, um, yeah, make it nice. And again, don't forget, it's not just about the house, although that is the priority one, but it's also about, um, exposing yourself to the uh, marketplace and um, getting into relationship with the guests. Um, I actually enjoyed it, so yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is fun. I encourage everybody on Saturdays and Sundays, get out there and uh, visit open houses. Just as you go in, just announce you're with KW and that you're just catching up on the inventory because you wouldn't want the host agent to think that, oh my gosh, I, I may have a buyer here, okay? So Lisa, yeah. did I hear you ask a question or Liz, was it you? Yeah, I was just gonna ask, I mean, with like fixer uppers, I mean, every house that I've ever lived in has been, you know, a little Cinderella story house, like ugly house. Um, would it be okay as an agent to maybe, I don't know, maybe put your designer cap on and like maybe give them a vision of what the house could be? Absolutely. That's, that's okay. part I don't of know if that was like out of my jurisdiction. Cause I always go into a house and I'm like, okay, take down this wall, move this. Absolutely. <laughs> like that's how I Absolutely. naturally am. So I don't know yep. if that was okay. okay. Yeah. 
you know, you give caveats and say, you know, this may be right. load bearing. And if it is, right. then it's, you know, but um, yeah. And one of the things you've got your tape measure so yeah. that, you know, cause people will come and say, you know, I don't think my sofa will fit here or whatever. If I take down this wall what, and say, you know what, I've got my tape measure. So that would be one yeah. of the things you would bring with you um, right into the open house and say, well, let's measure, let's see what's going on. That's how big is your sofa? Let's measure. How big is your bed? Mm -hmm. Because people, especially when the house is empty, the house looks smaller. The yeah. rooms look smaller when, when the house is empty uh, or the room is empty. Once the furniture is in, you'd say, well, I never thought that would fit. Remember, oh, man, I have another thought. <laughs> okay, Glenn, go ahead. I'm sorry, Liz, I'll come back to you. No, it's okay. Go ahead. I want to actually um, build on what Liz was just talking about. Because when I, I mean, when I was in class, you know how they scare you about everything. <laughs> um, is, I've been an interior designer for the last 16 years and they made it sound like I should not open my mouth. What did and you say? You've been what for 16 I'm, years? I've been an interior designer for the last 16 years. I just got into real estate. Oh, okay. Um, and to me, that was always my angle. Um, the one thing I will really say, I would not talk about load bearing like or anything because if okay. they're suing now to, because of the, the, you know, the wrong price, if you tell someone <laughs> that they can remove a wall, that, oh yeah, you know what I mean. Like, really, even as a designer, I should not be an architect. Should be saying that most contractors mm -hmm. should not even be saying that. But that's that's why out, I said, I mean, give it true. a caveat. Give it a caveat. So you know, just think about this. But it could be wait. I mean, talk about know. color, furniture placement, all that. I mean, that's yeah. you know, what I mean, that's mm -hmm. totally open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. wouldn't talk about you know extending kitchen stuff like that because that's something I think they could come back and say to you. You know. Okay. okay. That's you know what, you can, idea. you can always refer them, say, here's an idea, but I encourage you to speak with an architect. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Consult a professional. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 So yeah, it's amazing. People cannot, Glenn, you'll, you'll agree. People cannot see, they don't have visions. They don't have imaginations. I'm one of them. I have to have someone show me. And then I'm like, Oh, I like that. And you're, <laughs> you're so, you're so right about filling a room looks bigger because it ends up being how your brain processes space. When, when there's a lot of furniture, you basically, your mind says to you, oh, wow, this is a big room. If, if this couch, this chair, and this love seat fit in here, it's a big room. You know what I mean? That's when right. you see it open, you think that is, you know, it won't fit. Yep. That's the open house I went to last week. Um, it was totally empty, which shocked me. And there were three that I was trying to get to. Um, so I went into this one condo and it looked tiny, tiny, tiny. And I walked out saying, oh, wow, well, I wish I would have gone to the other one that had the furniture. I, I felt that would have been time better spent. So I get to the car and I look up the other addresses. The one I just came out of was the one I was saying I should have gone to. The flyer had the furniture and now the unit was empty and it looked so much smaller, I couldn't believe it. There are virtual staging companies just because of what you've just pointed out and what Glenn has uh, also pointed out, oh, okay. that things look smaller when they're empty. So you can do at least on the photographs in the MLS and you can see the sun is starting to hit my face. Um, the MLS and the internet show at least some of the rooms staged. There's a price per room. So sometimes agents will just uh, stage like the living room, dining room, and maybe master. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did notice that on one. It said stage living room, which was interesting. I had never seen that before. Yeah. Okay, what else? Um, I've noticed in all the open houses that I've been to, like you, you spoke about, you know, going with, you know, the potential clients and guests throughout the whole house. I've gone to so many and the agent's not with me at, at all. Well, are you identifying yourself as a realtor? Half the time. Well, I, before I wasn't, before okay. as like a regular guest, I noticed that realtors don't, I don't know if it's because of COVID or if because that's not a practice that many agents do, but I've noticed they just kind of let people walk around and just stand where all of their papers are is what I've noticed. I don't think that's very professional. I don't think it's of service to the seller because I think you need to point things out because we don't okay. see things. 
We don't right. see things. Now, again, safety, they go into the rooms. Right. You don't necessarily go into a room, especially if it's a small room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it only makes the room look smaller. Um, but I think it's your job. Yeah. I think it's your job. Um, I'm going to tell you, be careful with things like there's carpeting, but maybe there's hardwood floor underneath. Um, mm. uh, usually the listing will point something out and it would be uh, said, owner says hardwood floors under carpeting. That protects you. Owner okay. says hardwood floors. Um, it's always good also to know how far back the property goes. Sometimes the listings have a survey. If not, you can pull up a tax map and make that part of your brochure. Okay. Does this help you? Do you kind of have a flow on how to, how to do this, how to prepare the house, how to yes. prepare yourself, how to get the word yeah. out and how to follow up? Remember I started by saying, you know, 50% is the prep, 40% is the follow-up. Only 10% is being there. Ooh, it's getting bright. Only 10% is really being there. But yeah. that's important too, because you want to really uh, get into a relationship with the people who come. Anything else? Anything you want me to go through? Oh, I should put gloves down, shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. Rubber gloves down here. Sanitizer. This way, when you get it, you'll have all this good stuff. Okay. Um, someplace in here, I did say that you should do a market analysis. I may have skimmed over it. Realtor prep, find out the town. You did say it. I think you said to do a mini CMA. Yeah, I said at the end, but I thought it was written here. I'll look through this and, and make sure, but you should do a mini CMA. What's active, what's under contract and what's sold within the last year and print them out. You don't have to do a CMA per se, just select the listings, print them out and have them with you because people will ask and you want to look knowledgeable about the area. Is there a favorable day Saturday versus Sunday for an open house? I'm sorry, say it again, Veronica. Is there a more favorable day Saturday versus Sunday for, for an open house? Sun, the public is more tuned into a Sunday open house but sometimes they're done on Saturdays and I want you to be open-minded and think about doing them in the evening during the summer while it's still light. But the public, again, it's the mind of the public, it's habits. Sellers are, I mean, buyers and the public are more used to Sunday open houses. They go on the MLS, uh, njmls.com and pull out the open houses for the day and get in their car and off they go. Right. Yeah. Patty, I have a question for you, kind of random, but not really. And maybe for okay. Glenn too. Um, in my house hunting, and it could just be me because I have an issue. I have to have a kitchen sink by a window. I don't know what it is. I, <laughs> I, I don't mind washing dishes, but I like to have a window over the sink. I'm finding a lot of homes have the sink or the cooktop in a center island and it drives me crazy is it just me or is that just how they do it like i wouldn't want to be looking at that beautiful island with a nice spread of food or drinks out and then have dishes in the sink or cook cooking on the stove i don't know what it is i can't get past it so what are you saying that you want the sink to be by a window like, so you're looking is... out the window yeah, like my two big, th it's my deal breaker. I'm buying a house. If there's no window over the sink, I'm done. And no cooktop or sink in the middle of a center island. And I see more and more houses, newer houses, they're designed that way. What is the rationale behind that? The primary sink is in the center island. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. It's the primary the sink. It's, it's, it's not, not an additional, this... like for, I don't know, what is a smaller one for? A wet bar, a bar for drinks or little bar. vegetables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's or a vegetables thing. for both. Yeah. No, it's yeah. a primary sink and then the cooktop. And I don't, it might just be me, but I can't move past that. I'm like, nope, I don't want neither one on my island. Well, you know what? Good for you that you know what you like and what you don't like. Um, 
but there may come a time where you have to adjust and right. see if you can't work around it. Sometimes also there are fads in design. It could be like the new thing, you know what I mean? Um, but also it could be the venting of the, like if, the, if it's the cooktop, top, it could be the venting of the hood, depending on how the, you know what I mean? The floorboards are. It, a lot of times it's just a new thing to do, but okay. so stick to your guns if that's what you like. <laughs> Yeah, no, I saw one a long, long time ago, 10, maybe 10 years ago, and I didn't like it. I'm like, what is that? And then I didn't see it for a long time. And then probably the last three or four years is like almost every other, you know, you know all what, the newer you know houses have it. Uh, another part of it, uh, we have a much more tendency to um, design towards entertaining now. Mm -hmm. So the yep. thought is if you're now cooking, you're cooking, cooking with your guests, as opposed to right. you know, looking out the window, you can't really be yeah. part of who you're entertaining. I okay. call it a Bon Appetit kitchen. Okay. That's what you used to see in the Bon Appetit magazine all the time. Oh, nice. Yeah. Thank Basically, you. you just have to start cooking for more people so that you can, you know what I mean? You can have entertainment. <laughs> yeah, I don't, when, I, when I have everyone over, I don't want to cook with them. I want to be done with that. I want the mess cleaned up. I want it out of sight. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. So now you just have to find the opportunities to do an open house. And I would suggest check the MLS for listings that come on the market from your market center and reach out to the listing agent and see if you could co-host. Say, cause some of these open houses are just so busy. They could use two people. The only mm -hmm. thing is make sure you clarify how the leads are gonna be follow, uh, handled and how's the follow-up gonna be handled, okay? If you're co-hosting, usually it's every other guest gets assigned, um, but just figure that out. Make sure it's clear, don't make any assumptions, but be proactive because right now it's very difficult to get an open house, to host an open house. People aren't gonna come looking for you. You have to go looking for the opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds great. Last, last call for class notes. Anyone going on? Yeah, anybody on put your email in um, the chat uh, so Glenn can copy it. He's gonna send it to me and I'll send you the notes. Last last call. So how did we do tonight? It's good, great. This is very informative. Great. Thank you. Yeah. They're it went quickly. Great. You're a good audience. You're a good audience. Now, um, how many are you going to be on the call tomorrow for the book club for the MREA book? Finally. That's the 8.30? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. You know what? Just come on, have it in the background. I know sometimes for some of you, especially if you've got um, other responsibilities, just put it on in the background and listen. You, yeah. you can be a stalker. I'll be I'll be teaching. So sorry, and they changed oh. our schedule back. Okay. Ver Veronica, did you get the information last week on that call? I did. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Oh, Patty, one last thing. Remember we were talking about the coaching um, lobby last time. Uh huh. I sent a request and Jason Ramos wrote back to me saying um, it's only for people in the coaching program. So I wrote back to him and said, I'm in the coaching program. I'm at Keller Williams City Views. Beck's my coach. And then he just never responded to me. So what do you know what? If refresh my memory, Glenn, on what you wanted. I, I just wanted to be able to go into the coaching lobby. Last week was the first I ever heard of it. And then he's saying... That I, I can't go in unless because I'm not in coaching, but I mean, I'm obviously. Are you talking the Facebook page? Yes, yes. I would love to information that as well. I'm also coaching with Beck. That's right. Now I remember your Fort Lee. Okay. Yeah. I will have a conversation with um, Mary Beth. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else who's um, not in the coaching lobby? Facebook I, page. I think I sent a request. I actually, I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure if they invited me, accepted me. Okay. What's the name of the group? It's the coaching lobby. It's a Facebook group, but it is a closed group. Uh, you can go into it. Um, the, it says coaching lobby. Um, yeah. And it does say Keller Williams or KW. And then you can ask to be invited. Patty, just before you sign off on this Zoom call, I just want to ask you a question about the next hour Zoom call, if you don't mind. 
Not at all. Just for some of you, um, I have invited the Woodcliffe Lake office to stay on. Um, hang on. For a, hmm. oh, I wanna stop sharing. That's what I wanna do. Okay, there we go. Uh, to stay on for an orientation program. Everybody's welcome, but it is going to be Woodcliffe Lake specific information. At least some of it will be, not all of it. So who has the question? I do, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey, um, yeah, do I need, since I think I joined a little, I think like a little staggered, so I'm not sure what this orientation meeting is about. Should I, should I jump on or is that? Yeah, not so yep, 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 yep. The thing is sometimes, you know, stuff is not yet relevant, but yeah, jump on. Okay. Okay. And like yeah. I said, that will be at um, seven o'clock, eight minutes. That gives me time to just powder my nose. And uh, Glenn, you're going to be kind enough to send me those emails. I appreciate it. I will follow up with getting you into, or at least approaching Mary Beth with getting you into the Coaching Lobby Facebook page. And um, yeah, guys, isn't it exciting? Real estate's a great profession. I, I really feel it, it verges on being a vocation because you're really helping people with very, very basic personal needs. And the big responsibility. So thank you for your time. I enjoy you. you all. Thank, thank you. you. Patty, thank I just you so much. Just so you know. Thank you. Okay.